إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته respected brothers and sisters to continue our weekly lessons revising and remembering ahkamu <clears throat> siyam i apologize for my voice there's not much i can do inshallah please have sabr with that as part of your sabr for the for ramadan inshallah jazakumullah <clears throat> khair you're stuck with my voice i think inshallah طيب today we look at مفطرات الصائم. Last time we looked at الأعذار المبيحة للفطر في رمضان. Those things that allow you to break the fast. So let's revise because that's what علماء do. Anyone remember or no? If you didn't attend, doesn't matter. Main thing for you to know. Anything that allows you to break the fast in Ramadan. What allows you to break fast in Ramadan? Traveling. Very good. So if you're a traveler. Then you can break the fast in Ramadan and compensate after Ramadan, correct? Very good. So, what if your traveling is very easy? You have air conditioning and everything else, very easy, and you can travel and still take the same ruling. Why? Sunnah, correct. But we want to know the reason because we have a lot of brothers who say, If traveling is not killing you, then fast. Which is most traveling, I think, alhamdulillah. Correct. And also, Allah connected it to what? The permissibility, because in terms of fiqh, we want to understand. It's correct. The Prophet ﷺ did like this, and he also approved others. And he also fasted in traveling, and he broke fast in traveling. And he also approved of people fasting and people not fasting and traveling. That is correct, 100%. But what did Allah connect that permission to? Traveling. So as soon as you are a traveler, you are allowed to do it. Just like we said about illness, correct? So if you are sick or ill, you can break the fast. No problem. Uh, it doesn't have to be very difficult illness because people are different, Ikhwan. Allah made people different in everything. Even how they can withstand illness. You know, some person can, like we mentioned last time, can go to the dentist, not have anything, get the tooth out. And someone sees the dentist, can't go in. So all everyone is different. So we shouldn't make some brothers we have They want to make people like themselves. It's not correct. And you can, alhamdulillah, fast in traveling, or you choose to fast in traveling. Someone doesn't. That's his choice. Allah made him, alhamdulillah. No problem. So traveling and, we mentioned being sick or ill. Also, something was mentioned similar to being sick or ill, but not that. Uh, vomiting doesn't break the fast unless you do it deliberately. Because we have a hadith who deliberately induces vomiting, then he breaks the fast. But someone who is old, for example, and they can't fast, do we hope they will get younger one day? No, because they get older. So as they get older, they will not get younger. So what do they do? Like the sick person, yeah, who cannot expect to be cured. There are two kinds. One expects to be cured, inshallah, he should compensate. And one who cannot compensate fasting physically. Pay the yeah, pay the fidya, correct. So what is fidya? How much? And what do we pay? How? Yeah, one meal we feed the poor person. They said, 
يعني half ساعة which is one kilo one twenty five grams but Anas رضي الله عنه and others from the Sahaba they did to feed poor people or needy people and I mentioned that there are two types of poor people and inshallah we'll come to that <coughs> so you feed them for every day you didn't fast so if it's a permanent one then 31, 30 days or 21 if it's 21 so 21 people once one meal so poor people who are poor people Yes, brother. Uh, we give chance someone because we don't want just me and him talking. <laughs> brother, mashallah, jazakallah khair. Someone on benefit here because we, if we're in UK, someone on benefit is poor or not? I don't know anymore because I'm asking. He's not, yeah? Okay, anyone thinks he is or not? Huh? You think? Because why is he on benefit anyway? Or she, if, if she doesn't have a husband or something. We don't mean any cheating people or people who cheat. Someone who is on benefit, generally they're not يعني, considered in Islam wealthy people. They don't pay zakah. Taib. Because in Islam we have two kinds of and they mentioned in Surah at tawbah ayah number 60, Allah mentioned fuqara masakin. Fuqara masakin, if they mentioned together in one sentence, they become different. But if we say faqir alone or miskin alone, it includes the other one. So what those two, one is someone who doesn't find anything or can't almost find anything. That's normally the one we think is the only one. And of course you can't find it even sometimes in Muslim countries. But the second one is the one who finds something but not enough. So to that person who must give zakah, we as Muslims, we have a responsibility to look after our poor people. So if we know some brother needs, he needs a year 12,000 pounds, he gets 8,000 pounds, he deserves 4,000 pounds. Now, for you to get for one person 40 pounds a car, you have to kill yourself. Not 4,000. This is how we have become. Yani, this is how we have become. And it's not even your money. <laughs> Imagine if it's yours, A'udhu Billah, you kill everyone. Yani, to give a needy person 40 pounds, we will kill ourselves. We will kill that brother. We will humiliate him to the extent he will say, Jazakallah khair, brother. I'm really okay now. <laughs> After the way you've treated me, I don't need any mozaka. I am very wealthy now. <laughs> well, like this I'm speaking from knowing things going on. Imagine 4,000 you give. Oh, Allah, you say, what is this 4,000? You give one family? What is this? Imagine you give 40,000. Oh, this is a disaster. And this I'm talking about one family. And this is how we have become inside, unfortunately. So anyone like this is considered a poor person. You can feed him. And of course, we mentioned in relation to ladies, two, two things or four things. If you combine, combine them, two things. If you mention them, each one, four things. Do you remember? In terms of the women. Menstruation, one, postnatal bleeding, which we call haid nifas in Arabic, haid menstruation, nifas. After they give birth, they have blood coming and that prevents them from fasting. Is it permissible for her to fast anyway? Because we said if a traveling person fasts, it's okay. And we said if a sick person fasts, even though it's hard, we said it's okay, it's acceptable. How about a lady? Can she fast? She can't fast. This is by Ijma of Ulam. Also mentioned a lady who is pregnant and breastfeeding. So they're allowed to break the fast. And what should they do if they break the fast? Make it up. Ikhwan, remember a rule. Anyone who can make up the fast fasting physically, he or she must make it up. 
And if they are able, anyone, whether it's man or woman, what if they can't? Like she gives birth, then she breastfeeds. Next year she gives birth, then she breastfeeds. So she has about eight, ten Ramadans together. It's more than kafara of someone who breaks the fasting. Tayyip. Kafara is, we will inshallah mention in Mufattirat, <clears throat> is to fast two consecutive months. She now has to fast, you multiply 10 by 10 months, 8 months, 6 months. Whether it's consecutive or not, it doesn't matter, but she can't. So it can happen. So in that case, she must pay fidya. Pay fidya, feed. If she can't pay fidya, what, the, what should she do? Anyone know? Okay, ask local people to give sadaqah. There's another, kill herself. <laughs> what are the, oh, those two? Which ones are correct? Which one? Huh? Abdul Aziz? Sadaqah? No, she is not obliged to do anything. So anyone who is sick, for example, someone, he has a permanent illness. Can't fast Ramadan, but he doesn't have anything to pay. What should he do? Nothing, Nothing because he's unable. Yeah. What if he becomes wealthy? Then he should do. If he becomes. So inshallah, today we'll look at Mufattirat al-Sa'im or Mufattirat al-Siyam. <clears throat> and they are the ones that break the fasting of the person. So first, al-aklu aw shurbu amdan. To eat or drink deliberately. What does deliberately mean? Meaning on purpose and you remember that you are fasting. So you, because it's, it can generally happen at the beginning of Ramadan. You're used to drinking, eating, whatever, during the daytime and you want to drink or eat. Then you suddenly remember that you're fasting. Are you allowed to continue or not? You're not allowed. <clears throat> because Allah said in the Quran, And eat and drink until the white thread becomes clear from the black thread of the Fajr, meaning the light. We mentioned that as well. Then complete the fasting until the night. And the beginning of the night is Maghrib. And it was also mentioned that Maghrib means what? When can we break the fast? Sunset. Sunset. But if we can see the sun, some of it, can we break or not? No, we can't. Because Maghrib means the whole of the disk has to go down. Okay? Even if you stand on something and you can see, it's okay. If you can't see it while standing, you're allowed. And I mentioned also about people who live in high-rise buildings because they can see the sun. And we on the ground can't see. It's gone down. They can't yet. And the same applies someone you're flying on the plane. This can happen in Ramadan. You start from your city or from your place. Then you keep flying, 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 and still sun is going with you. Subhanallah, what the time now, iftar, sun is still going. What do you do? You do the curtain or? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> yes, correct. Wait until you cannot see the sun, meaning gone down. Khalas, <laughs> Maghrib. Yeah, of course, if you're traveling, you can, but I'm saying if you're fasting. So of course, if you're traveling, one brother told me, he said he was going from Emirates to Germany. So he had the companion with him, and they were one of them was not fasting, one of them was fasting. So the one who is telling me is not fasting. So he said it was like very long fasting because the time they took off and the time they landed, 20 hours or something. And he, I don't know if it makes sense, or maybe America. Anyway, he told him to break the fast. He said, no, no, no problem, inshallah, it will <laughs> soon. Still not going down, not going down. 
So he said, okay, I will wait, inshallah. So he had to fast very long day. So it can happen. And are you allowed if you decide to fast from Fajr and you're traveling? Then we thought, oh, I feel very hungry. You know, all this food going around in the plane. I can smell it. It's making me crazy. Except, especially that curry smell or whatever. And you love chicken curry. What do you do? Are you allowed to break the fast or not? But you made the intention from Fajr. I put shubha for you. <laughs> yeah, of course you're allowed. Because you're a traveler. At any moment, even five to Maghrib, you can break. But you have to compensate the day, of course, later after Ramadan. So what if you eat or drink and you forgot? You ate and drink, and then you remembered only. Oh, subhanAllah, I'm fasting. fasting then continue fasting, correct? Yes, because we have a hadith. But if you eating and drinking, you forgot, and someone can see you, what should that person seeing you do? I mean, nothing illegal, I mean. <laughs> Let you finish or say, Brother, what are you doing? Let you finish? MashaAllah, a lot of rahma, brother has. <laughs> so you see someone eating. Yeah, remind him, say, brother, uh, Ramadan, actually. Not iftar yet, yeah? So it's better to remind, because it's not correct for you to, because he will then... Ah, yeah, you, if you know him. If you don't know him still, you can, if you can speak... Even if you can't speak, you can say, Ramadan, you're eating. <laughs> or you say, A'udhu Billah, what are you doing? Something like this. Okay, the second is sexual intercourse. Because that's by Ijma also, and the first one also by Ijma. And here we have, first he must do Tawbah Istighfar. But because it's a two-way street, she should also do tawbah, istighfar, the wife. Unless, like I said last time, she was forced and she was scared, that's different. And they must compensate the day which they broke the fast, and he should pay the kafara. Kafara is to free a slave, which we don't have now, if he can't find or can't do, then fast two consecutive months. If he breaks during the two consecutive months due to a, an excuse, like being sick or traveling, he continues later. And if he can't fast two consecutive months, then he must feed 60 poor people, meaning for every, for every day. <clears throat> because of the hadith, I will mention the hadith because it's nice. لحديث أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال بينما نحن جلوس عند النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أبو هريرة said while we were sitting with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and these a lot of a hadith start like this so this shows that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم didn't stop people sitting with him not like now we can't find a brother we're looking brother we're looking for you what's up what's down everything we tried can't find him, say, I'm busy. So the Prophet ﷺ was not like this. He tried his best to be available to people. When a man came, فَقَالَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ And he said, O Messenger of Allah, this is the proper adab with the Prophet ﷺ. And those who are ulama, we say to them, Ya Shaykh, Ya Ustad, Ya something, not like by name. Halaktu, which means I'm now f finished, perished, destroyed. Fakala Malak, what's wrong? The Prophet said, Kala waqatu alamra ati wa ana saim. He said, I uh, had intercourse with my wife and I was fasting. Fakala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hal tajidu raqabatan tu'tiquha. So the Prophet didn't make it worse than it is. 
Ele diz, Aoudo Billah, get out from here. How could you have done this? You're fasting. He didn't say anything. He said, do you have, can you free a slave? Qala la. He said, no. Qala hal tastatiu an tasuma shahrini mutatabi'ain? Can you fast two consecutive months? Qala la. Someone would have said, a'udhu billah, why can't you fast? When you're fasting, mashallah, with the wife, huh? But when two months, you can't fast. Why can't you fast? Bring doctor certificate. The Prophet didn't say like this. He said, can you fast? He said, no, I can't fast. Tayyib khalas. Don't make it worse for him. Because you may kill him now. Psychologically. <laughs> if you speak too much, because already he feels guilty. That's why he came. Otherwise, he wouldn't have come. And he would have continued. He came and said, halakt. Already he feels very bad because... It's like he's finished. He feels bad. So the person doesn't make it worse. So he said, I can't fast. Hal tajidu it'ama sittina miskinan? Can you feed 60 poor people? He said, la, I can't. Then the Prophet ﷺ waited. فَمَكَثَ النَّبِيزَ وَسَلَمْ فَبَيْنَ مَا نَحْنُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ Look at the Sahaba. No one is speaking. And this is correct adab. If you have ulama or someone in the majlis, don't start giving him fatwa. Brother, he can do like this, and the other one, he can do like this. And he's confused now. What should he do? No, just wait. If the ulama keep quiet, we should keep quiet. فَبَيْنَمَا نَحْنُ عَلَى ذَلِكْ أُتِيَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى بِعَرَقْ فِيهِ تَمْرُ وَالْعَرَقُ الْمِكْتَلِ So the person was brought a big thing with dates in it. So he said, أَيْنَ السَّائِلِ فَقَالَ أَنَا He said, where is the question? He said, here I am. قال خذ هذا فتصدق به يعني take this and do do صدقة give it to other people poor so the man said I am the poorest I I give it to someone I need this تمر this day these dates أعلى أفقر مني يا رسول الله anyone you can find poorer than me so he said فو الله meaning this man ما بين لابتيها يريد الحرتين between the two mountains of Medina, ma bayna labatayha ahlu baytin afqaru min ahli bayti. There's not a single house, even though it may, Allah alam, يعني, we can't check it. Some come in, because now we have lots of people who try to get money for nothing, we are suspicious. But if we know someone and he came and said, I'm very poor, we should believe him. Because we know him. We don't know him as a kathab liar. But we, we, are, we have a problem with people who are coming and asking, and we don't know them. Like some brothers say, we, let's go collect for Chechnya in Palestine. You're Chechnya, I'm Palestine. And some people do like this, unfortunately. Allah alam. So we have, because of that, we've become sometimes suspicious. But we're talking about people we know. So he said, Wallahi, between the two mountains of Medina, there is no family poorer than my family. Look, this guy, what sin has he done now? He's just done, Billah. And he come and say, I'm finished, and then the person laughed. I need to alleviate his situation, because this guy is already in distress. Can you fast? No. Can you do this? No. Can you find this? No. We have some dates. Let's give. I, I need it. So the Prophet laughed and said, "Hatta badat anyabhu, anyab these teeth." I forgot what they called mola. In size, I think, the sharp ones. Until he laughed, meaning he smiled, until he could see those teeth. ثم قال أطعمه أهلك طيب give it to your family so this man came with very big problem we went home with food يعني this is رحمة of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and that is something I think we we like as for something because this is فقه إخوان we feel shy of course to discuss these issues but we have to to know them 
in order for us to know the deen of Islam. وفي معنى الجماع إنزال المني اختيارا. The kafara doesn't have to be paid according to the majority of the ulama, but the same meaning of having intimate relations is to make oneself uh, ejaculate sperm. فإذا أنزل الصائم مختارا بتقبيل if he kissed his wife and he because we said before, yeah, if someone he is afraid that after kissing something will happen, he can't kiss. Okay, the same for the wife. Now, if he kissed and he released the sperm, or lamas, or touched, or istimna, or masturbation, which is not allowed, but if it happens, or غير ذلك, or something similar. Fasada sawmuhu. This is the opinion of the majority of ulama. His fasting is not valid. لِأَنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنَ الشَّهْوَةِ And I agree with this opinion. لِأَنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنَ الشَّهْوَةِ الَّتِي تُنَاقِضُ الصَّوْمُ Because we have a hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah said, my slave leaves his food, drink, and his shahwa for me. His desire for his wife. So he, this, the ulama said, comes under the shahwa which the person must leave in the daytime of Ramadan. And goes against the psalm, the fasting. So he must compensate the day and not pay kafara. Because Even Though some ulama said, if you break Ramadan in any way, without an excuse, you must pay kafar. Some ulama said. But as far as I remember, the majority said, it's only to do with uh, intimate relations with your wife, sexual intercourse. Amma idha nama sa'imu fahtalam, wet dream. If the person sleeps and he's fasting and he had a wet dream, aw anzala min ghayri shahwa, or he ejaculated without having desire, like someone who is sick or ill. كَمَنْ بِهِ مَرَدْ فَلَا يَبْطُلُ صَوْمُهُ لِأَنَّهُ لَا اخْتِيَارَ لَهُ فِذَلِكَ Because he did it involuntarily, not by choice. So these things we have to know, Ikhwan. And the women in the time of the Prophet used to be shy, but they used to ask these questions, even these about wet dream, ihtilam, and so on, to know the, the, the ruling. The third that breaks the fast, at amdan, to induce vomiting, deliberately make yourself vomit. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Man qada, who is overcome by vomiting in the daytime of Ramadan or fasting, then he must not compensate that day. And whoever deliberately makes himself vomit, then let him compensate for that day. Here, the, the sheikhs who did this book, they consider that hijama number four, and the same like hijama, hijama everyone know? Cupping, when you apply cups to the skin, and you make little incisions, and you suck the blood out of the skin. Uh, it's called cupping, hijama in Arabic. Uh, they consider this hijama, that hijama breaks the fast. And this is an issue of difference. A lot of the Sahaba, if not all, they consider that hijama doesn't break the fasting. And they used to do. So this is an issue of difference. If you're not sure, don't do it. And the same applies to let blood out through the vein, which you called fast in Arabic. It used to be used, and it's very beneficial, for, but it must be done by people who know how to do it. Or, for example, donating blood. And many ulama said donating blood is not doesn't 
uh, break the fast. Many said it breaks the fast. So if you're not sure, avoid it. As for little blood, they said, أَمَّا خُرُوجُ الدَّمِ بِالْجَرْحِ أَوْ قَلْعِ الدَّرْسِ If little wound or, or wound, or you remove a tooth, tooth is extraction, أَوْ الرُّعَاف or nosebleed, فَلَا يَضُرْ Then you continue fasting. Because it's not hijama, not like hijama. Number five, if the blood of menstruation or postnatal bleeding comes, then that breaks the fast, even if it's five minutes before iftar. So that day the lady can't can consider to be fasted, she has to compensate. If she can. Uh, no. Number six is the niyyah to break the fast. Sometimes we don't get, pay attention. The niyyah to break the fast. Like someone who is very thirsty and thinks, if I find water, I will break the fast now. Some ulama didn't consider the niyyah, the intention to break the fast, as breaking the fast. But many did. Meaning just the intention not to eat or drink. Because they say, فَإِنَّ النِّيَةَ أَحَدْ رُكْنَيِ الصِّيَامِ And we have two rukun of siyam, two pillars. One is the intention, and the other is the actual fasting. فَإِذَا نَقَدَهَا قَاصِدًا الْفِطْرَةِ وَمُتَعَبِّدًا لَهُ إِنْتَقَدَ الصِّيَامُ So if he thinks, he removes the niya totally, then these sheikhs here, they consider that he has broken the fast, and it's a very strong opinion. Number seven, الردّ عياذا بالله لمنافاتها للعبادة ولقوله تعالى لئن أشركت لا يحبطن عملك. Number seven and last is ردّ when a person becomes leaves Islam because Allah said if you do shirk then your deeds or your actions will be lost. So uh, that's what we have time for. If you have any questions that I can answer, you're very welcome. Jazakum Allah khair. I think everything clear. Yeah, yes, brother. Wa alaikum salam. Barakallah fiqh. Very good question. You forgot and you ate some food, and there is a drink. But when you go to the drink, you remembered you're fasting. But there is food in the mouth. What do you do? We ask our brothers. What do you do? You carry on fasting, mashallah. It doesn't answer the brother's question. <laughs> It's like they say, some sheikhs, a lady came and asked them. Some sheikhs in the group and in the majlis. So she said, my chicken fell into a well. So can I drink from the well and do wudu? They said, A'udhu Billah, why you allow the chicken to go in there? They're not answering the question. So they tortured her for a while and then they gave the answer. This has nothing to do with you, okay? She couldn't see, but halas, happened. Just answer the question. So the correct answer is that you cannot continue eating, Ikhwan. When you realize that you're fasting, you cannot, can, you cannot swallow the food. And you wash uh, your mouth. And some will say you can swallow, because the Prophet said, but it's better not to do it, and it's actually correct. And naturally, the drink you can't drink. But if you see scanning for the food, don't come If, the ulama didn't leave anything, if, like brother is saying, if you're scared that it will cause damage to your health, you can drink as much only as it will move the food. Like if you're choking or something like this. But not other than that. No. Yes, brother.
somebody in the now and say, yo, yo, do you need to <coughs> would you do your job and just do what's inside and put it out? If it's li very, very tiny, little bit, maybe, but it's better not to swallow it because it's still food, you know. So you're not supposed to eat after Fajr. No. The problem comes when you have the Adhan and you're eating. That's uh, different. No. Yes, brother. Yeah. 60. Yeah. No, you can do one time. If you can't fast two, if someone can't fast two months in a row consecutively, then you can just bring 60 people and do it. No. One go. No. Yeah. To be cured, yeah. Okay. This is an issue of difference, Juan. This is a good question. <coughs> and the ulama didn't leave, like I said, anything untouched. All these scenarios they've talked. So someone who is sick, he doesn't expect to be cured, or she. And they continue like this, and one day they get cured. Because Allah can... You know, even if they don't know a cure, for example, today, maybe a few years later they can know a cure. And Allah can cure without a medicine, just by his decree. So what does he do? Does he compensate? The scholars differ. It's better if he can do to compensate. If not, fidya, simple. But mostly if it's a few years or more, it's very difficult for people. And we can't get people to fast one month. But now we want them to fast three, four months. If they can distribute it throughout the maybe different years, that's fine. Then it's wajib, obligatory. But if they can't, then fidya. No. Even if they paid the fidya, it's better to fast. Some ulama said. Some ulama said, no, khalas, if he paid the fidya, no. So it's better if he can, then it's better. Yani. But if not, alhamdulillah, we have fidya. <coughs> yani if he paid fidya, khalas. If he can't, then yarhamkala. If he can't and he already paid fidya, then he doesn't have to do anything. Sheikh, alhamdulillah. Yes. This is terrible. Don't ask me about it. <laughs> we have 1.30, I think, yeah? 1.30 or 1 something? I mean, I, I, when I come from Tarawih at 1 o'clock, I see people going to Fajr, I think. I mean, they're going somewhere. I don't know. It's a big suhoor or something. It's a huge people, a huge numbers of people going. I thought this must be a big suhoor or Fajr. I think it's Fajr. Ah, they have their timing, I think. I don't know, because, you know, brothers went and observed the Fajr and other times during the summer, and they came back and said, like Taiba timetable. And it's three something. Oh, it's not, it's not three something, now it's two, yeah, 220 or 230, 229, something like this. <clears throat> if you're not sure, follow the one that for sure they checked. Even Isha in the summer, it's better to follow the one that is later. Why? Because number one, brothers checked. I was one of those who we looked, we went and looked. Isha in the summer. When does it come in? When does the red glow disappear? Number one, people who check. Number two, in Europe, you have to know a little bit of geography. In Europe, Northern Europe, like UK and other countries, like in Russia, for example. In Russia, you have huge differences. One place today, they told me, they break the fast seven 
30. Another place they told me before, 9.30. Because the guys, the brothers in 9.30, they're north. So when you have north more, then the day will be longer. And we are north, uh, UK considered to be North Europe. Northern Europe. So in Northern Europe, yani, it's better to be on the safe side, I believe. If you can't wait until 11.30, like if it's not Ramadan, I mean, because of course Ramadan is different, but if you can't wait until 11.30, you have work and study, then some ulama, they allowed to combine Maghrib and Isha and sleep. If you can't physically wait. If you can, of course, you should pray. That's why in the summer we see some masajid combining, which يعني, I don't agree because masjid should do five times, and who wants to combine does it at home or in the masjid and then goes. But يعني, some masajid, some mosques do it. So Allah alam, I, I think it's hard to believe that Fajr starts at 1.30 or one something. For me, it's very difficult to believe. Allah alam, because... I was told the masjid I pray near my house, Masjid Fida, and opposite is another masjid. You cross the road, there's another masjid. So I was told that they pray there twice, Fajr. Is correct? So I'm more confused now. Yani one jama'a, one o'clock something, one jama'a, three o'clock. Allah alam what is this? I don't get it. So, refer it to the big ulama. <laughs> but for me, it's hard to believe that one something is Fajr because no sign of it. I think if you go outside where there are no lights, no city lights, and the sky is clear, I think it will be hard to see the Fajr to come before 2.30 or something like this. So it's about an hour difference, I think. So it's tolerable, but I think in the winter maybe it will be bigger difference, maybe. Allah Alam. Jazakum Allah khair, subhanak Allah, ma bihamdik, shalom, astaghfirullah. Oh, 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 o